I brace myself before going inside Nimgon's room. What hits me first is the luxuriously large aquarium wall. The aquarium runs farther back farther back to the walls beyond the curtain behind the curtains. The aquarium is mostly empty, save for a few decorative rocks. A golden humanoid figure elegantly floats back and forth from behind the glass. I wonder if this aquarium leads to the sea. Realization finally dawns on me. It must be the eel person Deerong has implied. She bears a toothy smile at me. I secretly hope it's a friendly smile. The act of swallowing suddenly becomes increasingly difficult. With my luck, the aquarium glass could crack open at any moment. I can imagine the tombstone already. Here lies Rue. 1961 to 1994. Fish food. That's pretty interesting. How... In this setting... Now, granted... It's interesting to me because they're gonna go into... Laptop technology that probably did not exist. Like, see, see this on the desk here? That's like a slim profile laptop. That stuff did not... I don't think ra laptops existed in 1994. That was the year I was born. I'm pretty sure laptops didn't exist back then, though. If anyone can, um, it, though, if anyone can confirm otherwise, I'd like to hear it in the comments. Um, by the way, if, taking in this background, see, this background impresses me. The other backgrounds were oh, all right. The first background just seemed a bit eh, to me, but I this. Office to do his personality. This painting is a bit interesting and spoopy, but I love it because I, I honestly love this mildly horrific stuff. Um, as long as it's not like super gory, it's just, it's just pretty cool looking there to me. Um, I really love the way that they drew the eel person in the, sh in the shadow here. And uh, again, this is sort of a laptop here. And what's interesting is again, 1994. What's interesting is this novel was made recently, recently. In fact, I don't think the kind of technology to make as clean-looking a novel as this one existed in 1994. I, I'm aware that this is a recent game. I'm 100% certain it is. Um, and I'm just wondering why they chose 1994 in this universe. Now, granted, it is a... Now, granted, this is an entirely different universe. Technology could have advanced faster. I find it interesting that in a fantasy setting, technology advanced faster. Because there's likely some kind of magic-y stuff going on. Though, interestingly enough, I just realized they haven't really mentioned any kind of magic-y stuff going on. It's just, when I saw the term modern fantasy on the game's uh, Steam page, I assumed magic-y stuff. Though I don't really think I've seen magic-y stuff. You know, the only fantasy stuff we've seen are the races. Um, so, it, it's interesting that in 1994 they seem to have um, a little bit more technology than uh, than uh, than we did in 1994. At least I'm pretty certain that a laptop like that would not exist. And they're going to actually go more into the technology in a bit here. Anyway. With my focus being on the eel person, I walk right into the large Oregon standing in the middle of the room. I bounce back while she remains unfazed. I love the whole one-eye look. I actually have a character with one eye, and I love her very much. Anyway, Ruchari Wadi? That is me. I, I just love a chick with an eye patch. That's just, like, absolutely badass to me. That is me, I think. Are you or are you not? A large red Oregon, who I assume to be Nimgon, scratches her head. I really love the yellow eyes, the yellow markings, um, the kind of military look to her. The eye patch, again, pretty cool design with the little orange um, sort of uh, overlay there. Um, <clears throat> I really do like the design of this whole scene here, and there's really a lot of warm colors. The more that I think about it, like, reds and oranges, and oranges just seem to be this person's thing. Mostly, like, oranges and yellows and reds. Anyway. I think, yeah, there's more oranges and yellows and reds, that's for sure. Yes, I am me, Ruchari Wadi. Her scent rubbed off on me after our collision. Beneath the fancy cologne is an unpleasant hint of tar. I count several pieces of jewelry on her person and a thick golden necklace on top of her high-thread high turtleneck. 
A Neo person knocks on the glass once and waves at me. Does this Neo person understand us? Right. Take a seat. Just standard procedures, sorry. She smiles at me and makes herself comfortable. Ah, I like the smile on her face. She's, uh, it's, it's pretty... It, it really just, just adds in a kindness to her. And that seems to be closer to the phone mannerism she had. But yeah, she seems to have a temper, but then mo but then seems to otherwise most of the time sort of keep a level head. Nimgon sits comfortably at the end of the long couch. She scrunches her brows while looking over a bunch of document folders. By the way, I really love the design of the... Uh, uh, the merwoman back here, the eel person, the sewer folk. I love how I really the uh, the other did a really good. I wonder if this is any kind of collaborative project, or if one person wrote this. Because if one person wrote this, the the um, or, or, I wonder if they had feedback. The reason I'm saying that is, well, I feel like this kind of consistent and creative background that is about to really ramp up in in exposition dumpness in a bit here, which I don't mind at all because I really find it fascinating, but um, and like this world is becoming very immersive to me already. I've, I only like this next scene is the extent of the game that I've seen so far, but I'm really excited to see how much more of it there is and how much more we're going to gain insight into into this stuff, though I'm pretty sure it's going to be far more about the characters than about the world, but I find it fascinating. I don't think it's going to be a very long game either, by any stretch of the imagination, however, I'm really curious to see how much more they touch on the fascinating lore of this game. Okay. <clears throat> Imgon sits comfortably at the end of the long couch. She scrunches her brows while looking over a bunch of document folders. There is a personal laptop computer lying on her to see. This is what I was talking about. I don't think there were laptops of this, of the yeah, especially that kind of slim profile that that I spied earlier uh, in 1994 in real life. I, like I said, I was born that year. It's 2019 now. A top end brand. My friend Koa bragged about her being on the wait list just to just to order one last month. Just to order one last month. The eel person floats closer to where Nimgon is. Never have I seen an eel person from this distance. She is a bizarre giant fish with curious perturbances on her forehead. Her skin emits low light, barely visible under the brightness of the aquarium. A permanent smile is branded on her face. She seems relatively harmless. Have a seat. Nimgon beams and pats the space next to her. Is it okay to discuss this in front of... Um... It occurs to me I don't know how to address the eel person. Oh, her? Nimgon thumbs at the eel person with an inquisitive tone. She continues when I nod. That's fine. Morak's mine. She... That's fine. Morak's mine. She can't understand us well. Plus, she does what she wants anyway. Nimgon's mellow voice puts me off. It gives a different impression on what she would look like, that's for sure. I prefer standing. Right, let's get to it then. You are late! <laughs> there we go, instant tone change. You missed the bus I sent out to you. You didn't answer any of my calls. She emphasizes each accusation with, th with a throaty grunt. The ill person knocks on the glass again. This time, she shakes her head in disapproval. Then come, I, I love this whole interaction, by the way. Lifts her brows and her scowl quickly turns into a smile. Uh, I love how the fish person helps her be a better, better boss. That's cute to me. Therefore, some explanations would be nice. Thanks. Her, her voice softens. It is as if I am speaking to two different people. I am so sorry. My plane took off late and there was some trouble with my carry-on. When I finally found my way out of customs, the bus had already left. And and my phone ran out of credits. I couldn't return any calls. And Gong gives me an understanding nod. Imagine my worry when Mika arrived only with her luggage. Although, it is just like Mika to forget a whole person. <laughs> Nimgon laughs wholeheartedly. The muffled sound of glass tapping gets Nim's atten Nimgon's attention again. They exchange looks. This is feeling like backseat managering, no kidding. So, you walked here? So you walked here? Yes, yeah, took me around two hours or some gunk. Two hours of sunburn and I, and I won't even get a tan. Really? It wouldn't have taken that long if you walked faster. <laughs> Wow, what useful advice! 
My, pa my face puts on an unamused smile. Nimgon clears her throat. Nimgon brings up the file and starts reading. I, I honestly feel like there's too much repetition of the beginnings of phrases. Nimgon blah. Nimgon blah. And not just that, but like, oftentimes it's just like... I'll point out when it keeps happening. It's kind of bugging me. It could have simply went she at the beginning of the sentence, and I, I would have felt like it was less repetitive and just better structuring um, of of the the flow of the of the novel. Your old sergeant from the army gave an outstanding recommendation recommendation letter. Not this again. It opened up my perspective on the war and helped me mature as a woman. However, five years in the military was more than enough. I made sure to admit the, omit the details of my self-taught lockpicking skill and minor trespassing charges I committed in my teenage years. So what if I wandered in abandoned malls and building wandered in abandoned malls and buildings? It wasn't. It's not like I was hurting anyone. There is no straightforward way to say this. A large percentage of our res, of our residents were mu a large percentage percentage of our residents were usurper mercenaries. Our relationships have improved a lot after the war, but some of us might not get along well with government mil government, government militants. Nimgon. Nimgon, I w Nimgon, was I hired to soothe your connection with the military? The current military and, sen and sentinel mercenaries have a long-standing history. Initially, both groups and the current military and the sentinel mercenaries have a long-standing history. Initially, both groups were united under the same name, the Usurpers, with the militia paying a big part in dethroning the late Empress. After the Usurpation War was over, a group of nobles and their associates sp split up from the, usur from the Usurpers to form the new government. Being mercenaries, the rest distanced themselves from the government branches, all the while keeping the name the Usurpers. Over time, they grew into a large and independent defense force of the country. To parrot a talking point of the media, they are simply too large to fall. Meanwhile, the military is still trying to reclaim its lost credibility even though they now operate under a new government structure, all because they were made up of the old noble, noble women and noblemen. I hired you largely for your skills, but your presence is, mo is very important to our relationship. Nimgon's gaze softens. Her protruding tusks make it harder to see her smile. You must have heard the rumors. You must have heard the heard of the rumors of your merger. Rumor is it rumor has it that the official military is looking to fund the Sentinels to combat rebels. To come fund the Sentinels to combat rebels. But I find it unlikely that they, that they are willing to indulge their competitor. I will neither confirm nor deny it. I can only say it might make your life just a teeny bit more difficult. Ingun's fingers absent-mindedly play with her necklace. This is a good opportunity for our Orogons to uh, interact with other races. As you can see, we keep to ourselves most of the time. Despite being in the same country, the Orogons have a tendency to build a strong sense of community among themselves. They tend to live in closely knit, densely populated neighborhoods. It isn't of, unheard of if an Oregon lived in, a, in congregate housing all their life. Therefore, while the usurpers were composed of soldiers with from different races, after the war, Oregons are the main occupants of these communal houses. non oregons prefer private housing and traveling to work, rather than staying in a provided facility. I'm not sure why I paused there. Apologies for that. That's everything I wanted to go through with you. Nimgod leaves the top, leaves the file on top of the, of the stack of documents. <clears throat> what interested you about us? Call it a casual curiosity. Off the record? Off the record. New choice. Bam. I'm interested in Oregon's cuisine's appearances. I mean, considering she's signing in as a sous chef, it both seems less possibly rude and more... Less possibly rude and perhaps m less possibly come on-ish. And just more understandable and, and and just more realistic um um to to say that she was interested in their cuisines because again she signed on as a sous chef she's a cook so i mean of course that makes a lot of sense 
You have your own type of cuisines. Oh, that's right. I forgot we hired you as a cook. <laughs> I'm going to taps your chin. I said Mika was forgetful, but would you look at me? My age is showing at times like these, says the woman who doesn't look a day over 50. Granted, I always find it hard to guess their age. Borgons are so different than nymphs, and they also have a long lifespan. You know what, Rue? I'd love to sample your food. I am the only sous I am only the sous chef, though. I, am, I doubt I'm allowed to cook what I want. I trust you to work, out, work it out with the main cook, then. I'll see what I can do. They say food is something that can be made the same way, but its taste alters depending on who makes it. I see. When you feed people your food, you feed a version of yourself to them. That's an interesting uh, philosophical statement. Hmm. Uh, I have not thought about it that way. It is difficult to replicate food exactly how I saw it on TV. It is difficult to replicate food exactly how I saw it on TV or recipe books, or the food I had in my childhood. Right. That's why each dish needs a personal touch. Nimgon gives me an amiable smile. I really... Ah, uh, she's so... She's so kind. I really love the whole motherly type of, of vibe she's giving off. She's great. You know, Nimgon, I find you so easy to talk to. Thanks, Ru. You said that a lot on the phone, but it's nice to hear it in person. <laughs> Look at me. My first day and I've already made a friend in a new place. Dear Aunt, I meant you. I wonder why that's such a thing. But sure, dear Aunt too. Does this line not work? <laughs> Apparently not with Oricons. <laughs> At least, you know, with the two that you've tried it on. When dear Aunt said you were scary, it got me a bit worried. What? Shit, what did I do? She thought I was scary. She has no idea what's coming. No, that's not what I meant. I misspoke. <laughs> I was just messing with you, Rue. You should have seen your face. Eh? I, I have expected Deerong to feel that way. She's still a kid compared to us. Wait, how old is she? 22 or something? A knot forms in my belly. Disappointment, perhaps? Deerong is younger than I expected. But really, though. N Nimgon's, space, Nimgon's face scrunches up again. I quickly figure being called scary does bother her. By the way, where should I stay? Right. Right. It feels like I dodged a bullet, changing the topic at last. We have unisex living areas and same-sex boarding rooms. I was going to assign you a room all for yourself. Funny thing is, there's a newly vacant slot, slot in Deerong's room. It belongs to the former assistant chef you are here to replace. Oh, I will take it. I figure staying with Deerong would make me feel much more comfortable. She has proven to be reliable and friendly. I was going to suggest the same thing, Rue. Should we ask her first, though? It's not like she can say no, since she fears me so much. <laughs> it feels like I am always towing the line when speaking to her. But it won't be a problem at all. <laughs> I always feel that that group of oddies would benefit from someone normal like you, Rue. The previous assistant chef, Dinba, kept them in check while she was here. All set? I will have someone... Uh, kept them in check while she was here. All set? I have. I will have someone bring up your luggage. Either Deerong or Query should be home right now. Please remember to get your security clearance from Hisari from the front desk, too. Oh, right. Thanks for the opportunity, Nimgong. Thank you for thank you for taking the opportunity. The sound echoing on the glass surface reminds me that the ill person is still in the room watching us. She gives me a wave from behind the glass. Rue turned out to be really nice, huh? She is she is still coming in. She is still coming in a few she is still coming in a few days. I mean, I don't know if I'm strong enough for she who hmm. The dark basement is more frightening with no one here with me. Is there really nothing down here? Actually, I don't want anything down here to answer me. <laughs> Ignoring the creeping anxiety inside, I make long strides toward the stairs. The door pulls open with difficulty, even though Deerong made it seem, seem too effortless. I put all my back muscles to use. 